You know, we're always told that the fight against metabolic disease is all about diet and exercise. But what if the real problem isn't what's on our plate, but something deeper, something happening in our body's engine room? In this explainer, we're going to look past the usual symptoms and find the hidden drivers that are really calling the shots. And you got to ask, right? It's pretty frustrating. Despite this huge focus on diet, on exercise, on all these different medications, conditions like heart disease and diabetes are more common than they've ever been. So if what we're doing isn't working, what are we missing? Let's dig in. So the way we usually look at this, it's all about treating the numbers you see on a lab report, right? Your cholesterol, your blood sugar, your blood pressure. But what if those are just the warning lights on your car's dashboard? They're telling you something's wrong, for sure, but they're not the problem itself. To really fix things, you have to look under the hood at the systems that are actually controlling your metabolism. Yeah, and one expert put it perfectly. If all you do is chase those numbers, but you don't tackle the root cause, you're just not gonna win. It's kind of like frantically mopping a wet floor while the sink is still overflowing. And in this whole scenario, that overflowing sink is caused by something called insulin resistance. Okay, so what is this overflowing sink? What's the real culprit? Well, the engine driving all of this is a condition that sits right at the very center of poor metabolic health. It's called insulin resistance. Basically, what happens is your cells start to get, well, numb to the signal from insulin. So your body does the only thing it knows how to do, it shouts louder by pumping out even more insulin. And all that extra insulin forces your body to store energy as fat, especially that really dangerous visceral fat that wraps around your organs. This is the central mechanism we have to get our heads around. And here's the thing, it's not just about insulin acting alone. Other systems are deeply involved. Take a look at this 2014 study. It found that as your thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, goes up, even if it's still inside that normal range, your risk for metabolic syndrome goes up right alongside it. This is a huge clue that to fix our metabolism, we've got to look at the whole system. All right, so let's pull on that thread. The first hidden driver that really fuels insulin resistance is one of the most powerful systems in our entire body, our hormones. I mean, they are the master regulators of our metabolic function. You know, for decades, hormones, especially estrogen, have gotten a really bad rap, mostly because of some major misinterpretations of older studies. But when you actually pool the data from dozens of randomized trials, a totally different picture emerges. It's a picture that shows these hormones are incredibly protective, especially for younger women in menopause. I mean, just let that number sink in for a second. A 39% reduction in the risk of dying from, from any cause. As one expert said, there is literally no other drug on the market that has that kind of protective effect. It just goes to show you how critical these hormones are for our health. And look, another way to see just how vital these hormones are is to look at what happens when we actively block them, which is a common therapy for certain kinds of cancer. This right here is a perfect example. In men being treated for prostate cancer, some therapies basically wipe out their testosterone and estradiol. And the result? A whole cascade of metabolic problems. It negatively impacts pretty much every single risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So if removing these hormones causes metabolic chaos, what does that tell you about the role in keeping us healthy? And this is maybe one of the most important takeaways. It's not just if you use hormones, it's which hormones you use. A lot of the fear came from old studies that used synthetic versions of hormones, which are chemically different from what our bodies actually make. The data on bioidentical hormones, things like estradiol and micronized progesterone, paints a much, much safer and more beneficial picture. Okay, so hormones are a huge piece of the puzzle, but they're not the only piece. Next up, we need to look at this powerful trio that honestly is so often overlooked, your thyroid, your gut, and chronic inflammation. So when we talk about the thyroid, most of the time we're just looking at one number, TSH. But you can think of TSH as just the check engine light. It's the signal from your brain telling your thyroid to get to work. It doesn't tell you how well the engine is actually running. The real engine power? That's free T3. It's the active hormone that gets into your cells and actually drives your metabolism. And the research is crystal clear. It's the free T3 level that best predicts metabolic health, not the TSH warning light. And this isn't some rare fringe issue. Not at all. This one study on heart disease patients found that nearly a third of them had low levels of this active hormone. 
It's an incredibly powerful predictor of bad outcomes, and yet it's a marker that's so often just ignored. Okay, so you might be wondering, what causes your T3 to drop? And where does all this inflammation come from? Well, a lot of the time, the answer starts in your gut. There's a condition known as leaky gut. It's where the lining of your intestines gets damaged and these tiny inflammatory particles can literally leak into your bloodstream. This triggers a body-wide immune response that directly messes with your thyroid function and your whole metabolic system. So what's doing the damage? What's causing this leaky gut in the first place? Well, a lot of the research points to a couple of key culprits in our modern diet, high amounts of fructose, and we're not talking about a piece of fruit, we're talking processed foods and sugary drinks, can basically poke holes in your gut lining. And at the same time, too many refined seed oils can make that gut barrier weak and fragile. These two things are just pouring gasoline on the inflammatory fire that drives metabolic disease. All right, so we've talked about hormones, the thyroid, a leaky gut, inflammation, and the thing is, none of this stuff happens in a vacuum. It all locks together to create this self-perpetuating vicious cycle that can be really, really hard to break. You can see how it works. It might start with a natural dip in hormones or thyroid function. That makes your cells more insulin resistant, which then tells your body to store more of that nasty visceral fat. Well, that fat then starts pumping out its own inflammatory signals. And that inflammation, which is being made even worse by a leaky gut, just further messes up your hormones and your thyroid. You see? It's a downward spiral where every problem makes the others worse, and it just speeds up the whole process. So when you see the whole picture, it completely changes how you look at this. Suddenly, you realize a high cholesterol or high blood sugar, they aren't the diseases themselves. They are symptoms. They're signs of this bigger underlying dysfunctional system. And that means the goal shouldn't be to just get a number down on a lab test. The real goal has to be fixing the entire system that's causing that number to be high in the first place. And that really leaves us with a big question, doesn't it? What if the future of health isn't about finding the next blockbuster drug to chase a symptom? What if it's actually about understanding and restoring balance to these deeply connected systems? Our hormones, our thyroid, and our gut. It's a fundamental shift in how we think about health and disease.